Retro PC Durham, it's Chris here with another video, and here we've got a, a Dell. Yeah, we've got a big Dell tower here that I picked up at a, um, a donation a couple of uh, a couple of days, weeks, months. Who knows? Who knows how long ago it was <laughs> compared to when this gets posted on the YouTubes. Uh, but we picked up this uh, with a pack a gentleman who uh, does something similar to me. Um, he builds uh, sleeper PCs, um, so he takes older cases and upgrades them so they can be used as gaming PCs or low-end gaming PCs, low-spec gaming PCs, mid-spec gaming PCs, uh, and then resells those. And uh, sometimes he's got parts and cases, etc., that he can't reuse. And this was one of those units. Uh, did not have, wasn't uh, loaded out when I picked it up. It didn't have anything in it except for the system board uh, and a couple of the other components. So luckily enough, I did have some parts that I could finish it off and we're going to take a look at that. So front end here on this Dell Optiplex 360, which is a Core 2 Duo, so it's an LGA 775 based board. We've got uh, installed in here a pair of optical drives and a floppy disk drive. These were all open bays, so I had to fill them with something. So we got a floppy drive in there. We have a DVD uh, multi burner and then a DVD multiplayer. So a DVD ROM drive and then a burner. And then we've got some USB and audio ports on the front our Dell logo, and then a clicky power switch. And then we've got some venting grills on the front here to be able to suck air in. Uh, panels on the side look the same. You've got your side panel view here with the Dell logo. Nice metal look and feel to it. And then as we switch around to the back, uh, we'll take a look at our port selection. It's pretty straightforward. we got our Dell power supply here. This is one that I'd actually pulled out of another uh must have it must have been an optiplex um that i had pulled it out of so it fit into this and had the same well you'll see the cable lengths when we open it up here but it fit perfectly and did the job on the system where we've got our rear audio ports ethernet six usb and then we've got a legacy ports here onboard graphics which we aren't using parallel and a serial connection and then we've got our connections for our graphics card down here interesting to note on this one uh, for the time, right, this is still 2007, 2006 to 2008, maybe, uh, that this would have come out in the Core 2 Duo range. No PS2 ports, so completely drop them from the lineup saying, hey, we don't need that. Yet you still have legacy serial and parallel ports, which is interesting in an, in an office environment, I guess. Um, maybe you would still need serial ports to connect up to some legacy devices. Uh, but as far as peripheral support for keyboards and mice you didn't matter if you had older stuff because you were going to just throw that away and plug into a new keyboard and mouse anyway. I guess that's what it would have been. Uh, opening up the system is pretty easy. There's a latch on the top here. You pull this and it will release the door. So you pull it and it releases the door. There is a Kensington lock slot here. So you could actually lock the top of the case to prevent you from being able to open the door in, a, in an office environment, I guess. All right, and we'll take a look on the inside of the machine here. We've got our Dell power supply here. It's not a heck of a lot of power. I think the maximum is like 230, 230 watts or something like that. Um, so it's not a 225, 255 watts. So it's not a heavy power supply, not meant for a big expandability. In fact, there's only enough cables to power what the system could standard complement upgrade to. So we have our 24 pin power, and then our 12 volt is down over here. Then we've got two SATA power ports to plug into our optical drives that went up here. And then our floppy disk cable, connector cable, which is like only long enough to reach over. Actually, the original floppy drive I intended to install, uh, the power port was farther in and this cable wouldn't reach. So I had to, I luckily enough had another one with a black bezel on the front that was able to work on here. Uh, then we move down to the bottom, we have our uh, connections for our hard disk drives and I had this didn't have any drives or sleds and I did have a spare sled that I pulled out of another older machine as well so we could do that hot swap uh, power supply or not hot swap that uh, easy swap power uh, connection for the hard drive we've got our SATA cable running down for this and then another SATA cable here which powers SATA power for two drives and there if you had another sled could install a second drive into this as well uh, for the graphics card i added in this radeon i think it's an x1300 card so it's an older card it's half 
uh, half a gig. It's a low end card by you know modern standards, and I think it might have been pulled out of uh, either a Dell or an HP workstation or something like that uh, a while ago. So a good fit in here uh, to be able to work with the system, give it a little bit more graphics potential than it would have what it would have had with the onboard graphics. But as well, we're not using the system memory that's installed here to power this graphics. It's got its own dedicated graphics. And that's important because the maximum memory that this system will support, at least on paper, and I don't have the DIMMs to test this at a larger level, it says it supports a maximum of four gigs. So it'd be two two gig sticks. And that's not a lot of memory, right? Um, in fact, I only have three gig installed in the system because I'm, I'm low on DDR2 uh, two gigabyte DIMMs uh, after a, a big uh, a bunch of upgrades uh, in the fall of 2020. So uh, we've got a two gig stick and a one gig stick in here. Uh, they are uh, paired up nicely, uh, same speed and timings. So that works out well and they've been tested. So they, they function properly. Uh, and then running this system is uh, the uh, Core 2 Duo E7400 that this machine originally came with as well. I thought about upgrading it to a, a slightly more powerful Core 2 Duo, but then I forgot, you know what, I'll just leave it as it is. Uh, we had to put a new coin cell in here to make sure that it would run properly. All the caps are clean and clear. Uh, the system needed some cleaning up on the inside. On the outside, there's still some scuff marks and stuff that I wasn't able to to, to work out, and I really didn't want to take a magic eraser to the, to the front uh, the front and the sides uh, for risk of damaging the, the the texture of them. Yeah, so the system's ready to go here. I figure what we can do now is plug it in, we'll power it on, and you can just take a quick look at how things are operating with a Core 2 Duo with 3 gig of RAM. Okay, so we're all set up here. Now we're gonna hit the power button. You'll see how long it takes to boot up here on this 160 gig SATA hard drive on this machine. And there you go, you're in Windows. So it really doesn't take that long to boot up. Now, that being said, <laughs> the thing about Windows 10 is it doesn't actually take that long to boot into the Windows desktop, but it continues to load background applications for the next couple of minutes. And if you've got a slower hard drive, that's definitely gonna show through. And if you've got a low amount of memory, that's definitely gonna show through as well. So that's obviously something that you always have to deal with as well. However, uh, we can continue to move on here. I'll quickly, pull up hardware info. Uh, we have the 32-bit version of hardware info running here because I installed the 32-bit version of Windows on this. The reason being, uh, if this system does in fact only take a maximum of four gig of memory or if it's not ever gonna be upgraded, there's really no point in installing the 64-bit version of Windows anyway. So we go ahead and keep this going here. Uh, just show off some of the specs here. You can see this Intel Core 2 Duo E7400. This is a dual core non-hyper-threaded processor. It runs at a maximum of 2.8 gig. And then for memory, I've got a two gig DIMM and a one gig DIMM for a total of three gig worth of memory. And they're running at, what did we say here? 333 megahertz, so it's not too quick. Um, that's running on this from uh, Windows 2000, uh, Windows 2000, <laughs> Windows 10 Professional. Uh, this is upgraded from a Windows 7 uh, license that came with the machine. And then I've got uh, the video card here, this Radeon X 1300 LE, uh, which again, I'm pretty sure I pulled out of a previous Dell machine and that's got 512 megabytes of memory access on there as well. The hard drive there is 160 gig, no issues with smart. We got the green check mark, so everything is running properly on that as well. The last thing I'll show off here is just a quick, uh, again, this is, doesn't, I didn't install Chrome on this one, so we're, I mean, we're down level a little bit in browser. I don't even have the new Edge installed on here. Uh, but just to show off the experience of going to YouTube and doing the crab rave video i spelled youtube wrong we're going to go to like a russian website now let's try youtube.com not youtube 
www.lowercase.com. So we'll see here loading up. So we'll see here loading up the website takes a little bit of time. I've got the crab rave on the front here because it was the one that we most recently watched. And we'll load that up quickly here. I don't have any speakers plugged in, um, so we won't be able to hear the snaps and the claps or the Uber Eats ad, even though it is quite funny. Right click here and stats for nerds up. We will go full screen and of course we're going to drop a couple frames doing all this right as it buffers up and loads up and gets ready to go we're running at 480p uh, 720p is going to be too choppy and skippy for this processor to handle and the graphics card isn't powerful enough to be able to take you know take over some of that capability so um, we got to deal with 480p which I mean if you think about a processor this is a system that was you know made to run before 2010 what would you be expecting for streaming video quality would you expect 4k no so 720p would be my top end expectation for this thing to be able to handle and it's just a little bit down. Now, it's possible that if I ran this through Google Chrome or on the new Edge, it would be better just for the just standard software uh, translations that go through from the old version of Edge versus those Chromium-based browsers. Uh, however, this is, uh, you know, okay for the purpose of just making sure that it actually does go. Uh, yeah, and again, um, now that we've all, all buffered up and we're running through, those 48 frames that we dropped are not going to be pursuing any further uh, throughout the rest of the video. So that works out pretty good. I think I'm, I'm relatively satisfied with, uh, with how well this system has turned out. So I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this video, taking a look at this Dell Optipec... Op So I hope you enjoyed watching this video, uh, taking a look at this Dell Optiplex 360 Dell Tower machine. Hope you're staying safe and healthy, and we'll catch you in the next one.